Hey folks, I'm your host Mike Pugh of the Virtual Intel channel, and I believe we are live. Let's go and check. I always got to double check just in case because you never know. All right, we're going to get into this thing in about a few moments. Let's see if some people can tune in. If they're not, it's all good. Let's do this. We are live. Now, this is a Runway AI series video, and I'm covering it because it's pretty much not spoken about in the mainstream of YouTube per se, in terms of like tons of people putting up videos about it and things like that. It's kind of something that's in the, in the dark, if you think about that. So I would like to express to those who haven't seen this tool and haven't used this tool as it hasn't really been all the hype that a lot of other AI tools are all about today. This is mind blowing. It's stunning. As you can see, I created this here. Now, how did I create this? Did I just write a prompt to get it to be generated? Hmm. That's a question. Now, I didn't just write a prompt, actually. I'm going to show you all folks the process that it took for me to get to this point. So basically, you have to understand in terms of AI art, you have to understand how the AI art tools work behind the scenes. So if you're trying to generate something of this nature, it is not going to come up right away off of a text prompt. I guarantee you. And this is not text to image. This is image to image. And we're in the AI AI um, magic tools for runway. So if y'all folks never use runway, I'm gonna show you how to get to it. That's the first thing. So let's go into Google and type in runway. For those who are brand new to this stuff, who never ever seen runway, the actual tool. It's run. It's also known as runway ML, which I believe the ML stands for machine learning. So runway ML dot I believe the developers utilize that because if you look up runway.com, it's probably going to be taken by some other website. And I'm not going to even do that. I'm not going to waste my time on that. I just want to get y'all folks who haven't used this tool to the tool. So pretty much you're going to sign up, right? That's how you get in. So you sign up for free and you have a login, obviously, just like any other online offering of a website that you can join most definitely a tool that has very high powered capabilities you want to create your account obviously now they do have pricing besides the free version so if you're more like a professional who has a, a large scale budget or a budget in general that you can throw some money at some online software maybe per month uh maybe per year or whatever the, the case is if you're really looking to go and take your already high powered toolbox that you have you probably have some digital tools on your belt already you probably already know a lot about online tools in general and ai art so if you want to go to the next level with it definitely check out their pricing they have a good pricing scale for everything that they're offering so this is not an advertisement by the way for their tool i'm basically covering and making a series on it for them to open the eyes of viewers around the planet who haven't heard about it and most definitely and hopefully to empower the online community most definitely for those who choose to watch my my live streams and choose to watch my videos if you definitely came here to learn something that's what i do this for i try to create videos to help empower the youth and most definitely people up to my age and beyond. So it's for everybody. It's not for just one type of person. So what Runway does, it's mainly, it was mainly designed as an AI tool, as the, back, the backbone of it for video editing. So for video editors, video creators, Runway was the thing to go to just to, you know, manipulate and play around and see what you can do to do some really quick iterations and quick edits of your video clips. So it mainly was based upon that. But once the AI art world started to 
explode with so much creativity and so much potential once they started to offer a lot of these these ai tools to the public runway i believe the team on runway decided to grab and grapple onto that as well and the ai art tools were born into runway since it's already an ai video editing software which pretty much edits images videos are images they're pretty much more of like clips and keyframes that you would eventually work on if you was to become a video editor or an animator which i'm i'm working on trying to become an animator myself so i'm just showing y'all folks just an overview of the website so you can get to see and get used to it uh, maybe you want to interact with it do whatever you want to do with it but this is pretty much more of the preview of everything that runway does so if you don't know anything about it just go and check out their website read up everything that they have to offer and you will get to catch up with what other people have learned about and you know a great deal of things that pretty much everyone on the online community who knows about runway already has experienced if they definitely went in depth with it and they got a chance to explore and experiment and play around due to the fact that it's free i mean they give a good amount of usage for free so it is it is something that's really really potent and you can keep experimenting for a good amount of time without error without flaws and you can it's pretty flawless it's a really great tool so that's enough about the intro to runway and how to get in and things like that so let's jump in so i created a great deal of stuff like for now, since I got to Runway, um, I didn't do too much of the video editing thing. I did maybe like two projects starting out, and I was playing around with the video editing. But once I got into to the AI art tool, there is an infinite number of possibilities of what you can create with it. So this is one of them. This is a cyclist type of AI art that I came up with. And this will not be generated by a prompt, I guarantee you. So this is stylized, it's very unique, and no one else has created it on a planet. I guarantee you that as well. And the reason being is because I utilized the 3D uh, capability that's built into the AI, AI magic tools known as text to 3D. So let me just get you to the text to 3D real quick. So we'll start off like we just joined and log in. And it will bring you to this side of the screen and you'll get to see everything that you have the capability to do. So I have no projects, no current projects, actually. Those projects I didn't really care for because I was just playing around and testing anyway. So those are just like trial test projects. So you're going to see exactly what I have here pretty much when you first start. Nothing going on. So you go to the left of the screen. If you want to work with the AI magic tools, if you want to start a project, you go to the right of the screen and you click the new project button or create your first project. That's up to you what you choose to do. You also can go to your profile and look into your account. You can go into upgrade. You can also go to the ML lab. I guess it's the machine learning lab. I'm not sure if that's what the ML stands for, but you can go look that up if you want. All right. So we're going to go to the AI magic tools on the left side of the screen and we're going to left click it to activate it or bring it up and I got these at the top and forefront because these I use but pretty much if you don't star them I starred them it won't show up so if you go to to the more like an archival view of it you can go and you can click these stars for the ones that you want to favor at the top basically so the most frequently used ones will show up here if you star them so from that point now you can choose which one you want to utilize so let's go to the new text to 3d texture I'm telling you this is mind-blowing so when you click it it just offers you a prompt section to generate and that's basically how a lot of the other ai art tools will work but some ai art tools they're very very difficult to get around and to basically get started Difficult meaning that 
they're not user friendly as much. So you have to know somewhat of what to do in order to get it to work with this. All you got to do is just type in what you're looking for. So I'm going to type in something simple like, uh, let's see, cute doggy. So let's just type in cute doggy. Now, you probably questioning yourself as to why would he type cute doggy as a texture? That doesn't make sense, right? But actually, the sensibility in my mind is to use it to my own use, use the tool to my own use in my own creativity and think of it as something outside of the box. So that's what I was able to do when I first started to mess with it. At first, I just started with typical texture names to prompt and to look up and basically generate. But then after a while, my, my mind just said, how about if I create textures that I can utilize that are normal looking things in the real world, but they're actually not a texture. There's something else entirely, maybe like an actual object instead of a texture. So I tried those types of things. Then eventually I started typing people and all kinds of things like birds and this and that. So if you type in literally anything in there, see what the texture that it creates. That's what I recommend. So we're going to hit generate. And from that, it builds upon itself a 3D texture of what you typed in. Now, look at that. A cute doggy's face shows up on a cube. That is pretty interesting. Now you can use this. This is the thing you can use this. So you can use your mouse and rotate. See, I'm rotating the cube right now. So with this, this 3d cube display, I've realized that all I need to do is take a screenshot of anything that's in there. And I can use that for my image to image usages when I'm trying to recreate images. And instead of going on Google and trying to find random images or taking photos from my photo archive or whatever the case is, in order to create an image to image, you have to have an image, right? So instead of even going from a text prompt in a regular text to image prompting AI art tool, I would much rather use a texture because the textures tend to come up with patterns that are unique as well. Now, this is really interesting because I never got a full face and this is a full cute doggy face. So if I wanted to, I can take it and try to manipulate it how I see fit. So you have to rotate the cube the best way you can to get the graphic to look full in the screen. Now, if you zoom your mouse by depressing your mouse scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out of the cube. Sorry about that. I was off center and off of the screen at a different angle, but pretty much you can play around with it until you get a good position on the screen and then zoom out and zoom in. And then there's another trick that I learned. Another thing you can do is use your Windows keyboard. If you're using a Windows computer, I don't think this is going to work on a Mac, but the Mac computers could be a different method. Basically, what you can do is zoom in on the actual cube. So you use the Windows key on your keyboard and you use the plus button on your on your actual number pad. And I'll show you how you can zoom in like that. So now I zoomed in. The reason why you want to zoom in is because you want to get a larger portion of the screen that you're capturing. And you want higher scale pixels like you want the pixels to stand out a little bit better. Now, if I if I try to catch it at an angle, it's going to make the actual images that I create from it from image to image distorted. So just bear with me as I rotate this cube a little bit and try to get a good position to capture. 
so this is not too bad of an angle right here so i'm going to go with that and take a capture of that so i just basically click the print screen button and now what i'm going to do is go back the other direction so i'm going to use the windows key and minus minus as many times and then bring it down so the next tool of choice for me will be um utilizing ms paint so here goes the thumbnail that i created for this video we're going to do is we're going to get rid of it and we're going to bring in the doggy image and just try to get rid of all of the excess in terms of any um parts of the screen that i don't really want or need so we'll basically utilize this here and just get rid of everything else that's extra using MS Paint. Okay, so you're wondering now, why is he using this? Well, you'll see that what it does, once I'm able to get a, some sort of a texture, this is not necessarily a texture, it's an actual face of a doggy, but I can use this and every single pixel is gonna be tracked and picked up by the image to image tool and it's going to try to regenerate based on the text prompt that you use so i'm just trying to break down the th the more of the theory to how these definitely the image to image text uh the text or the image to image generator tools work for ai art so if you see these pixels right the pixels have what is known as noise so if you see there's tons of distortion going on when you go closer and closer to the pixels it's not super well defined well defined well what that does is when the ai art generator picks it up it may not know what to do with certain portions of the screen that are not well defined and it will also pick up on the color contrasts and color codes of each pixel so you have to realize whatever types of patterns that you're using it's going to pick up on the pattern of pixels that's going through the color contrasts and the the, the inconsistencies in noise things of that nature so all the bright areas all the dark areas everything will be detected and then it will try and go and recreate something new based on your text prompt that you choose to tell it to create. So let's go in and with that being stated, we're going to see what it does. So I just wanted to zoom in so y'all folks can see the kind of the chaos that's going on when it's zoomed in because these AI art tools all they pretty much do, they don't know exactly what you want when you first start. You have to basically guide it. It's kind of like guiding a pen or guiding a pencil. So your prompt is basically guiding them and guiding what you want them to extract from the data that's being provided. So they use also what is known as dat data sets. So you can go in and research on it, but these huge data sets are what they train on and they utilize the data sets to pretty much go through millions and millions and millions of similar images and they detect those now if you're doing text to image it's going to rely on that almost a hundred percent on the data set if you're doing image to image it won't necessarily rely on it a hundred percent so it's going to most definitely rely on the pattern that you provide and the types of pixels that you chose to implement in your image in your graphic if it's just a graphic a basic graphic it can be anything it can be a total abstract it can be random pixels just scattered on the screen and it will try to pick up on it and it will go in and try to recreate something off of it so that's that part so what we're going to do now we're going to go out of this and we will let's see where where are we at let's see we're all the way i don't know which one we're on hold on one second 
Just got to figure out where I'm at. All right, we're on this one here. Here we go. So we're going to go and open up another tab. We're going to duplicate. And we'll do a different texture. Just one more texture. And this time we'll call it uh, stars in the sky. Try this one. See what that does. And generate. Now, I'll show you some other things that you can do. So this is stars in the sky. It doesn't look that promising because it's not a great pattern per se. It's not well defined. It's just things are random. It's totally random. So it's, it's kind of like noise, you know? It's a lot of noise going on there. But what you can do, you can increase the ambient light if you want. And you can also change the directional light. And what that does is give you a little bit more to work with. If you're not seeing a, a well-defined pattern or whatever the case may be. So let's go. You can also use the tile option, which will start to give that pattern a different texture. So now you're having duplicated multiple areas of the screen and tiled it pretty much. So now if I zoom in, I got this repeat pattern pretty much like a repetition. So sometimes repeat patterns are really good. So I'm gonna just capture the screen right there cause I like the angle. Maybe I might wanna put it at an angle like this or an angle like that, depending on what I wanna do with it and maybe zoom it in a little bit. If I put this kind of angle, like perspective, I'm going to get some really, really interesting design from the pixels when I go from to, from image to image. So now what I want to do, hold on one second. It's hard for me to do this because I'm using my, my lap in my living room. So we're going to zoom in again and we're going to try to get that angle that we had earlier so hold on let's zoom out and just try to get that angle back so i had a really nice angle let's see this is the only thing with it is that you might have to play around with the 3d perspective rotating your mouse many times to get the kind of angle that you're looking for. So it's something like that that I was working on. Here we go. Let's be getting closer. Wow. So it's kind of hard. I apologize if that hurts your eyes or whatever, but it's kind of hard to get an exact position on it because it's a, a rotating type of thing. So you can also go and then turn it into an image, which I was able to do. Um, seems like it's not working that good as, let's try this. Let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that's not working too good. Probably because it's not tiled enough for this type of size of the screen. So we're gonna go in and zoom out real quick and just add more tiles. All right, so let's zoom back in and try this. Okay, there we go. So now it might work a little bit better, but either way, this cube is just not big enough to be zooming in like that. Let's see. I just can't get the angle that I'm looking for. Oh, here we go. All right, I know why, because I, I didn't move the mouse the way I'm supposed to. I forgot about that. When you zoom in using the uh, Windows key and the number pad, you have to play around with the mouse a little. 
and just move it around the screen. All right, there we go. This is something that I can I can use. We're gonna hit the print screen. All right, so it'll be worth it. You'll see, folks, what I'm gonna generate after this. So we got this. This might take a long time. This live stream because what I'm doing is not something typical. This is definitely something very different in terms of graphics that you're trying to create. So here goes the the birds that I did at one point and I was playing around with this I scaled it out this is going to be a pattern for maybe like some sort of clothing or whatever and um, what we're going to do is start new and paste and the scale is pretty high so 1920 by it's supposed to be like 1080 but it's probably a little smaller than that. I'm not sure. 19, 1920 by 1080p. That's the screen size of my computer. All right. And then we're going to reduce the size a little bit. And we're going to take this and we're going to upscale it because I want to see the pixels look a little different because the pixels have a lot of noise and that noise is going to create crazy colors. So because there's a lot of colors, let's just go in and zoom in. You'll see. How many colors is in there? There's tons of colors in there because of the pixels are all different. See how much the range of the colors that's in there? If you go in close on the pixels, I can take one of those pixels out and use the, the eyedropper tool and then zoom out and I'll show you what that pixel looks like in its color that's pink see that so let's show you some more uh, other colors let's go zoom in again uh, we can use a zoom tool and we're going to grab another pixel all right we'll grab that one and then move all the way over and drop that one so look at the different colors see that so it's going to be a lot of colors so i already can tell by just looking at it zoomed out i can tell it's a lot of colors in there so what we're going to do is pull this back okay so what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a background file let's go to pictures and then go to background now this is i'm telling you this is outside the box folks this is not the norm i'm going to use this spiral too i played around and was messing with the 3d sphere and the 3d sphere is a whole different ball game but i'll show you folks the 3d sphere so we're going to go and call this uh space space one doesn't matter what you call it and then we're going to go into our real s grand if y'all folks saw my other videos in the past, if you've never seen the videos on the real s grand upscaler, it's pretty simple. You just download it from Google, look for real s grand E S R G A N, and then get that file and download it to your computer. Turns into a uh, zip folder, unzip it, and then get the. Uh, you're basically gonna use the batch file, so you're gonna throw your file on top of the batch file. So let me show you real quick. We're gonna go to space one and throw it on the real s grand so it may actually go too high in scale so let me go over to ms paint jump into this one again and reduce the size first so we're going to reduce the size of pixels down to about 500 that way it's a much smaller size and then it doesn't upscale too much so we're going to go in and save over the other one and then we're going to drag it to the real s grand upscaler batch file and let it drop and what it does is it upscales it now when you go to zoom in look at the pixels the pixels are much more well defined the colors are more solid it will improve your background see that so that's what you want because if you go in with all those random colors it's going to be crazy so now we're going to take this over to let's go over to runway 
and we're gonna go in so so far we got the dog and we got the space tiled image so now what we're gonna do let's open up a new one because i like to have all these open because i need these i'm still iterating still creating off of them here goes some other examples this was one that i did uh it was a, a 3d texture I started with this texture here it was some sort of a color thing like color. i forgot exactly what i typed in but uh it was brain i think i did brain brain wave or something like that pattern and then it came up with this as a graphic that i iterated off of this initial pattern from tech uh, image to image so we're going to do we're going to duplicate we could have just stayed there but i want to show you the 3d sphere when i go back to it so now we're going to go hit the back button or back arrow and we go we go to image to text generation and use that tool so this is how powerful runway is you can bounce around super quick online and this is free and there's no delay the only delay you're going to see is when you generate and a little small time delay that it takes for that graphic to come up on the screen so we're going to hit upload so you can either drag or drop your file in here or upload it by clicking the left click mouse button where it says upload here so now we're going to go for that space background we're going to do the space background first instead of the doggy so you can possibly see something insanely amazing i'm telling you this stuff is pretty prof profound what you can do so what we're going to do is call it stars in the sky just to play around with this right now we just want to see what it does from the first initial generation so right now by default the strength in the settings is set to 75 percent so keep in mind you're going to have advanced settings here that you can choose to open up and utilize or you can use what is set at by default i recommend to start out by the default don't click advanced settings yet just to get a base to start off from it's going to hit generate and what it's going to do it's going to create stars in the sky but it's utilizing whatever it picked up from there and based on the default settings so now we got this nice background i like it because i can use this for something intensely powerfully beautiful when it comes to the, the graphic generation so you never know what you're going to come up with now hold on one second let's go into show in folder and we're going to change this uh, name i made a little error right there so you want to keep your names somewhat consistent to what you created in the prompt so you can get back to it easily so i'm gonna call it stars and click ok so that's my first stars background that was generated off of this initial image all right so what do we want to do now stars in the sky let's put something different and let's click the advanced option so we go to advanced the reason why i want to open up advanced because now i know what type of style it can create starting out with what i first initiated in my first generation so they call this the first iteration so with many different ai uh ai art tools you're going to have iterations numbers of iterations that you can choose to go up and scale to or you can choose to limit at a certain number so with runway which is different from a lot of the other ai art tools it doesn't give you the ability to create multiple iterations so keep in mind you're only going to be able to generate one iteration at a time so with that being said this actually gives the content creator who's trying to generate ai art using it more of an unfair advantage when you think about it because now they are forced to work the settings how they see fit to generate something different also they're forced to learn what each setting does it's kind of required because now i can't create multiple iterations 
unless I hit generate multiple times. But when I hit generate multiple times and I, if I don't change the settings, I'm going to be limiting myself to what I actually can possibly get. So that's why I say when you first start your text prompt, you're not really getting what you want 100%. And there's no way you're going to get to where I, where I got here off of a simple text to image. It just won't work. Even if you go from image to image, you're not going to get what I got here. It just doesn't work that way. So you have to really, really fine tune things and start to get into the tooling, get into the settings, start to learn the settings. So I'm going to come up with a whole entire series to break down every single option in terms of how they work, what works best for what type of art style, etc. I'm not an artist on that level in terms of art styles because I really don't have an artistic style. I just am more of like a copy artist. So if I see this drawing, I can draw it, literally draw every little detail and make it look identical. That's how I am. I've been that way since I was a kid because I'm more like an analytical type of person. I'm a, into tech too. So I'm more of a techie, went to school for civil engineering, but I failed at art because I can't come up with the art from my mind. I have to look at it. I have to look at a piece of paper and look at something in the real world and then I can draw it. But that's the only way. So this is perfect for me because these are giving me concepts I can draw draw upon and build upon. For the type of artist I am with no style, this is perfect. Using the AI art tool, they give me the styles to generate from. So now it's actually taken my mind to a whole nother level and I'm able to evolve myself my mental capacity can evolve based on creativity. So I can use these tools as a creative out outlet, you know what I'm saying? And really expound upon what I couldn't do in the past with my art or my artistic skill. So, all right, instead of none, we're going to go and play around and see what we want to do. So I, I like, for some reason, I like the concept art style. This concept art style has generated a good amount of this stuff. Now this is cartoon. This is concept art. So you see how it's really different. It's kind of abstract a little bit. Concept art. A little abstract. Can't really tell if it's a person or what. But you can, you can tell based on the shape that it's the shape of a person. But you can't tell their face. You see, it doesn't have a well-defined face. This is that shape of the tires are not well-defined. They're all kind of squiggly, weird looking a little bit. Some look kind of circular. Some don't. You know, that's the concept stuff. So that's why I like to play with the whole concept art, because it can give me some sort of a weird, weird looking style like that. Now, when you first iterate off of that very first base, background that you got from the text to 3d you want to store this this is important it's very crucial so you go to add to assets on the far right of the screen the lower right under strength and you click it what that does it stores it on runways more of their uh digital back backbone of their archival system so they have like tons of data storage that they're offering up for free and also for paid users. So it's limited to a certain amount for free. So once you keep going and going and going and going, eventually it's gonna prompt you, give you a warning that you're running out of data storage. Just like Google Photos and Google Drive, uh, Apple has their own uh, thing. I forgot what they call it, even though I got an iPhone, but pretty much you have a storage. So, let me see if I can get to something that I don't really care too much about. This is the one with the birds that I played with. So this one, I'm not really stressing too much. I do want to keep it. Oh, here goes one that I, I don't really care for too much. Uh, make sure I add it to my assets. I'll take a screenshot of this because I want to see the text prompt and get back to the seed. And actually, at this point, there was no seed when I first did this one. They recently unleashed the seed storage capability. So I don't have a seed for it. So it's no way I'm really going to get back to it. So actually, let me get out of that one. This one I can get back to. I know this one. Uh, let me go and hit the screen, uh, print screen and I'll save it. 
that's the thing with um runway there's no way to really save the whole screen or uh the actual seed itself if you leave it if you leave that screen so hold on one second i'll go to something here and start this one from scratch i already saved it i'm not worried about this uh now i'm gonna print the screen hold on one second no that's not good i did a print screen already here that should have saved it to the clipboard so i don't know why that happened let's see which one was it all right this one so we're gonna print screen and we're going to save this and put it in one of my i don't know it's not even a background uh let's see i'll put it in my animals folder there we go and call it cat save that that way i can get back to every setting that i had for it and be able to recreate it and then expound upon it all right so that's a that's a recommendation to those who maybe haven't been doing that all right, so we're going to hit the back arrow. The reason why I wanted to go here is to go to the assets so you can see the assets. So these are all stored assets that I've been working on, slowly but surely building upon different things and expounding upon them. Maybe I might run out of time because this is very time consuming. Everything that you're going to be doing regarding AI art, you're going to be spending days and days and days, going to turn into a week, going to turn into a month, and it may be a year next time. You go around and you'll see that you fold up your hard drive and had to purchase external hard drives and everything because you went so crazy and so hard with it. That's potential. That's possible, but it's worth it. So what we're going to do is go to the far right of the screen where you see these three dash lines. And I apologize if I don't have like an arrow to show you to guide you there. But go to the middle of the section of the screen where it says date created all media and you have these three lines. You're going to click the little tiny boxes and that opens up the ability to see the screen and all of your images you've been iterating. So as you can see, I have tons of stuff I've been working on with really nice graphics and nice backgrounds and really stylish colors. These things are not going to come up from text prompts. They just won't. I guarantee you. So in order to get these nice stylish backgrounds, which I'm going to create a whole entire series covering backgrounds, it may be like two or three videos because you can break down the pixels to such a degree and start to create backgrounds like this one that I just now did. So that's just one type that you can create, but you can use this and iterate off of it and go further. So talking about that let's get back to this over here so what we're going to do i'm going to go into the concept art remember i said i wanted to create the concept art so we're going to change something here in the text prompt along with concept art so what we're going to do is add astronaut Astro not got exactly how to spell it. I think that's astronaut. Let me just go into Google and make sure astronaut. Yep, astro not. There we go. All right, so Let's just put astronaut on the back of it and see what it does. We're going to hit generate and let's see if it actually generates an astronaut with it. Now we didn't keep that seed, so we may lose that graphic altogether. But since I stored it, now look at this. Hold on. Since I stored it, <laughs> I, I, I was saying something. And then this came up. I forgot that I clicked the generate too fast. Sorry about that, folks. So since I stored it, we'll be able to get back to it. So don't worry about it not being able to be utilized. Now look at this. Holy crap. Now I'm going to explain something. 
which most people may not realize, but this is something that is very powerful and very potent. Now, the perspective that I chose, let's get back to that graphic. And it's the perspective. Look at the per perspective. We're going to go to uh, the tiny one. Let's go to the tiny one because that one is a little bit more easier to, to view. All right. All right. Look at the perspective. You see the angles? This is what I was talking about in the beginning with the perspective. So that those angles and the fact that it was a 3D cube gave me the ability to give it perspective in terms of the angle that these tiles of the universe or the stars in the sky showed up as or part fragments of the universe. Right now, look at this. It's in the same perspective, these lines. Wow. Now, one thing I notice is that this guy is all the way to the far left. Now, I do wish he was somewhere over here because if he was actually iterated over here, man, this is an amazing graphic. It's stunning. I, I love it. It looks really awesome because I've never really seen anything that looked like this. I just haven't seen anything like this before. And that's the whole thing. When you, I think when you're creating and when you're coming up with concepts or whatever the case may be, it might be with an art AI art tool or just by yourself to come up with something unique. That's not easy. You know what I mean? Cause so many things people have tried already. So these AI art tools can generate unique graphics, things that no one has ever seen before. But like I said, if you're not providing the background for it in terms of image to image, so that that first initial base, if you're not giving it a solid base to work upon, then it's not going to know what to do. So that's why using that 3D, the, the text to 3D tool, it has so many possibilities. It's so infinite. It's beyond because there's tons of ideas, tons of thoughts, there's tons of things to come up with in your mind and just prompt. So you put that in there, starting out with the 3D, the text to, to 3D concept, you get the base going on and then you just bend the reality of what you see. So talking about that, let's get back to the doggy. So with the doggy, we're just rotating it, rotating it, rotating it. And don't worry about the angle because you can change that in your favorite image editor. So the angle doesn't really play on anything but your eyes. But keep in mind where you lock in, that's where the graphic is going to be created if you're doing image to image. So where you lock in, that's where all the pixels is going to affect everything that's going to be generated. So you see where the dark images of his eyes and his nose are. Think of those as actual points of reference for the AI art to start iterating upon to create like a spaceship or to create a person, etc, etc, etc. All the lines, the wavy lines are where the hair is starting to change in contrast and color the dark portions to the light, to the bright portions, that's where it's, the curves are going to end up. That's where the lines are going to start bending. So you have to think of it like that. Depending on where you choose to angle it, that's the kind of art direction you're giving the AI art tool to draw and sketch upon. So I just wanted y'all folks to see that. Hopefully you understand it, that it's going to sketch like that. See how it's sketching this? So once I started to realize that, using runway because I'd never seen this capability and I'd never understood it in any other AI tool. Even when I was playing around with stable diffusion, I didn't see that pattern developing even with image to image because I was just not an understanding of it. And also I didn't have a text to 3D type of a uh, tool with, with prompting. So this was probably a mistake. I probably bumped into it by mistake. But now that I know how to do this, it can go way beyond I'm telling y'all folks light years beyond what you can imagine. So 
there you go with that i'm gonna use this even though he's not in the image it looks like he's drifting off into space i think that is pretty unique this is going to become a t-shirt and probably become something that i could put like a big um mural in my house or a painting or something i don't know i know i like this because look at that what is that there that looks like it could be a planet could be the moon could be something and then the stars look really twinkly and, and unique and what is this is this like a ring of saturn or something i don't even know what it is but this could be the earth like down here it gives so much fruit for thought and you're you're just like wow what what is going on here and who drew it or who painted it you know you're gonna question like all of that stuff but this was generated by ai magic tools on runway and y'all folks caught witness of it live on youtube which is crazy all right so that's just that right there now let's zoom back into the settings because from this point now we got something we locked in on. Let me go and download it on my computer just in case if the browser crashes and I lose connection with Runway or whatever whatever catastrophic event that could possibly happen, I might lose this. So I'm going to save it on my computer and hopefully my computer, I don't lose my computer, which a lot of those, those things actually happen to me in the real world. It actually happened. I lost many computers. They shut down. Uh, the hard drive failed, crashed, etc. So we're gonna call this stars one. I should call it Astro, but we'll put star, well, stars one because I did create another stars. I'm gonna save that. So also, this is a stunning background. So you can use this background. You can go into, what do they call it? Erase and replace and take out this part of the graphic. So let me show you that. So we're gonna go in again and duplicate now you got to have a powerful computer to keep opening up tons of tiles so my my computer has 32 gigabytes of ram so i'm pretty decent and good on that part so we're going to go in and with hold on we got to go to erase and replace sorry about that folks so we switch over go to erase and replace and this tool is recent it just now came up they started offering this up about three or four days ago the text to image, uh, text to 3D texture that came up about two days ago or something on runway. So all of this stuff is like brand new. So it is just, it's crazy what you can do with this AI stuff. So let's go. We're going to go and try to mask this guy out. And the funny part about it is that this AI art tool also is teaching me stuff like i never really use this masking stuff for anything because i didn't really want to afford for photoshop i had adobe um adobe creative cloud for a while but then i just let it go because i was paying like 50 dollars a month or something like that and i just didn't want to keep paying but hold on one second i got a call i'll be right back hold on my my lady's calling me my wife, so hold on one second. And I'm doing this live, folks, so it's real life. Hey, Booby. Oh, I didn't get a, get on the phone yet. Hold on one second. I'm going to shut down the audio. All right, folks, I'm back. Sorry about that. So all I want to do is I masked all this out. You can use the brush size as well and zoom down, use a tiny brush, or you can use a large brush. It kind of works like Photoshop's uh, masking tools and stuff and any other image editing tool that has masking. And I typed in here a, a prompt. So you have to type in a prompt to replace what you want to replace so I, I just typed in a race because i want to try to get rid of the astronaut if this doesn't work whatever whatever the case is we have to like cover the whole thing sometimes 
If it doesn't work, then don't worry about it. We can cut it somewhere around here, like around this point. And I made an error right there. Sorry about that. So let me clear it. If you make an error, you can clear it and go back and then start it up again. So yeah, I'm gonna draw, not draw, but I'm gonna create like a line on MS Paint and just get rid of it if I have to, just to create the really nice background effect. But I like it like this, I like the full size. So I'm hoping that I can salvage everything. So we're gonna hit replace and that's gonna get rid of the astronaut. That's what it should do. And replace it with the rest of the background as as it is without and it did it but for some reason i tend to get text every now and then when i'm trying to erase so we can try to get get rid of this text and as we see fit hopefully it can go away sometimes when you try it it's just going to create recreate more text so it just doesn't know what to do with this erase. We're going to hit replace again. But before I do that, actually, I made a little error. I did not add it to my assets because I might get an error if I try to replace it at the moment. So I have to start over from scratch, but I'm not worried about it. We'll just try it. Hopefully no errors come up. But sometimes this tool, for some reason, since it's so brand new, and it's being tested actually it's going to keep giving little errors every now and then and telling you and warning you stuff like uh this content is in violation yada yada if you do it repeatedly making violations your account could be closed it says something like that i experienced that already but um erase text let's put that erase text Sometimes when you explain more in the prompt, it will do exactly what you tell it. So you got to give it more detail. So let's see what it does. Um, it's not going away. Erase. Background. Try that. Erase background. I think this might work. So you just keep trying, keep trying until you can clear it up. There it is. All right, so that worked. The only thing is that it has a little residue. So with that, you probably can fix on MS Paint or somewhere else. Um, let's put clear background. We can try that but we're going to add it to assets first and download it and call it stars one alpha because it's a variant off of the original um, stars one that I created with the astronaut. So now what we're going to do is try to clear it or match the background. So we're going to, we're going to put match background or correct background. So put correct background and match it and match it. Correct and match background. That's what I should put. Correct and match. These AI our tools are pretty smart, so don't be shy about what you type. Tell it, tell it exactly what you want it to do, and it should help. So correct and match background. Let's see what we get. Hopefully it clears it up, and hopefully it doesn't bring more text onto the screen. Look at that, it brought more text. <laughs> It tends to do that too, but it did clear it up a little bit. You see that? Interesting. So 
Let's see if I can go a little bit more in depth with that. So correct the match background, erase background. Let's hope that works. Uh, it didn't work. All right, I'm not worried about that. So that's not too bad of a deal. Um, maybe I can put some sort of objects in the future in that position, even though that, that, that part of the background doesn't look too smooth with the texture. So I'm not worried about it. We're going to go out. And we're going to expound upon this. We're going to use it actually to build out some kind of scene. So let's do that. So I'm going to save this seed. So I'm going to copy it because I like the seed. And we're going to go in and use this astronaut. And this time we're going to use it as the init image. So we're going to left click it and keep in mind this space image that we started out with is no longer going to be in use. So you're going to get a total different generation if you try to generate after that. Actually, what I'll do, instead of using the fixed seed, we're going to uncheck it and we're going to hit generate just to see what it does without the fixed seed. Let's try that first. So we didn't change anything else. All I did was uncheck use fixed seed. Now look what it did. Now that is stunning. So there it goes. It put him in there. But now he's standing on the clouds. That's very unique. That's crazy. And look at that. Is that the sun? I don't, I don't even know what's going on up there. But this is unique. Trust me. We're going to open in a new tab just so you can see the full screen view of it. So there it goes. Wow. That looks good. I actually like this. And the pixels don't look that bad at all. And you want to know why? Because we cleared up the pixels in the original base image. Since we scaled up those pixels, look how clean the pixels look. It's not that much distortion. It's very, very accurate. See that? Now, if I went back to try to scale this up, this graphic is going to look even better. So that's an idea for y'all folks. Scale up your init images that you choose to use for your image to image before you bring it in. And that's going to correct the pixels. And then once you got that, you got less noise. And it's going to extract from less noise instead of extract from more noise. <coughs> if you want less ab abstract looking art, then you want to have less noise. That's the whole idea and the premise behind it. So now what we can do, is we can play around from the concept level and start to build more into it. We can also play around with prompt weights to get a more well-defined graphic. And we can build upon this as well. But before we do anything, we're going to add the assets, download. And once you download, we will go into another variation which is stars 1b all right so so far we're we've achieved some amazing success and we haven't really done too much all i've been doing is changing one thing here one thing there nothing too complicated right all i did was uncheck the use fix seed and look at that it just generated something that i wouldn't i wouldn't have thought of putting in the text prompt all I put was stars in the sky and astronaut, and I don't need anybody's artistic style. There's nobody's style here. The only style is the concept art. See that? So nobody can say I stole this from them. You know, there's people who are complaining. There's artists out there that are complaining about the fact that their likeness of their art styles being used. And that makes sense because people are putting in the text prompts, their names and stuff, and they're not getting credit for it. So some of these, you know, uh, more like AI 
content creators, AI art content creators. I don't know what name you want to give them. Someone like myself, maybe they're copy artists or someone who has no idea about artwork or whatever. And they, they're not an artist at all. Maybe they are artists, whoever they are. They may not know how it's going to impact another artist who's a real actual bona fide artist. So this is definitely a path away from that, away from hurting anyone else in the process. So hopefully those type of people get to see this video and this gets spread around the planet as an alternative, as a method that you can work to really generate something unique without having to use anyone at all. All you're using is the basic settings on the tool and general generalism, but you have to use your creativity, obviously, to come up with a lot of it. So with the text prompt, you're not required to put anybody's name in there. It's just the astronaut, just stars in the sky. That's all general. That's in the public domain. You know what I'm saying? Like, no one can say, oh, he took my idea. No, I didn't take anybody's idea. The stars is always in the sky. And the astronaut is an astronaut. See what I'm saying? I didn't steal anybody's style, period. So there you go with that. So whatever else we can do with it would be within the settings. Or we can probably add another name in there. We can add just one thing. We can just put astronauts. Let's put 10 astronauts. Let's add a number to it, right? 10 astronauts, plural. And you'll get a much different generation as soon as you hit generate. So the way that the generator works based off of prompts, any little difference in the prompt will create something new. So keep that in mind as well. You're going to get something entirely different, something new. But if you want to go and change one little thing in here, make sure if you want to get the same style and everything else to look kind of the same, you want to go to use fixed seed. And that locks in on the position of that seed. So the seed, you have to think of the seed as like a, in the Matrix, right? I don't know if you folks ever watched the Matrix film. Well, pretty much they had these seed pods where humans were basically located at. And you would have to go into the machine world to literally grab them out of their their pod. So think of this as a particular location on a big data center somewhere in some other place. Maybe Google's, Google's data center or Runway's data center. And they have tons of storage space. And this actual file is located on one of their hard hard drives built into the data center. But they call that particular sector of that file location a seed. So that's where it will be located. We don't know where it's at, but it's located somewhere out there. So if you think of it like that, you can relocate it. You can actually get to the file seed location and actually access it. But you have to know its number. So it's kind of like an address. The number, the seed num seed number is kind of like an address to locate it. But also you have to have every other specifics that will guide you there. So you have to have the details of the text prompt exact. You have to have all of these settings to be set to the exact levels, even the prompt weight and the strength. Every little detail has to be exact in order to get back to the seed or else you'll never get to it because it'll be lost in the infinitum of all the other seeds that are out there. And this number can be tons and tons of digits. It doesn't have a limit. Well, maybe if you go all the way out here, but even if you go out here into, I don't even know what number that would be. If you keep adding numbers, it doesn't even matter. You can still find it. It just has to be the exact seed number. So that's the break and spill on seed. So, so far I added 10 astronauts, didn't change anything else, but I checked use fix seed. So it says here, seed provides a way to randomize generated outputs. This, the same seed will always produce the same outputs given the same parameters. So if you have all the parameters, like I said, set up the same, you'll be able to generate the, ex the exact same graphic or something almost a spitting image of it. So now the only difference of this seed and this direction of this art is 10 astronauts. So hit generate and see what it does. And I'll go back and erase it. So I'll erase the 10 and the S and you'll see it'll 
pop right back into the same graphic. Now look at that. This is not 10 astronauts. Definitely not. So what happens at this point and what I've realized is that it's going to take the same graphic. It's going to take the background. It's going to take everything. And it's trying to iterate something close, closely remote to space. So maybe like a spaceship, the astronauts could be traveling in. Maybe the astronauts are inside the spaceship. It doesn't really know what to do exactly because it's far from this position in terms of the 10 astronauts in that particular seed. So what you got to do is increase the prompt weight in order to get more of the likeness of what you wanted to actually generate. Because look how the prompt weight is all the way down to a low level compared to what it could be. So prompt weight will determine other factors. So it says prompt weight. Also referenced to as classifier free guidance determines how much to take the prompt into account in the generation. Higher values may result in more precise results, while lower values may generate more creative outputs. So the lower the value, it can become much more creative because it starts to go towards abstract. If you go too far to the left, it kind of will blur the image and smudge the image. So if you go towards the right, it will be more closer to what you wanted the prompt to prompt it to create in detail. So it will go into fine tuning the detail. So we will move it towards the right so you can see what it generates now within the same seed and the, everything else is the same. Let's see what it does. So now what it's doing, it's expounding upon that graphic image here with the sun. It looks like a sun. Now it looked like it created an asteroid. This may look like a starship or a satellite or something. And these look like nebulas or some kind of, a, I don't know, stars doing something. Maybe they're supernovaing or whatever. I don't know what they're doing up there in space. This could be another solar system, too. I have no idea. I'm not even into space like that. So let's move this out a little bit further. We had around 23.4. I'm going to hit generate. Let's see what else it does. Wow. So now it's going in and really creating that, that uh, satellite or whatever that is. That's interesting. And it seems like it's changing the graphic again in terms of the background. Now we really starting to get the solar system coming up. Stuff in the solar system. This is interesting. Now another thing you can do is you can change the strength and the strength will go hard. It will go hard and really bring in what you wanted to detail as well. But it may go far away from your creative side that you you thought you wanted it to create. So it may stray away, way, way far out of the range of your creativity. So let's go and go to about 85 and hit the generate. When it's at 23.4. So I recommend to change this bar first or this bar first. Don't change both of them at the same time after you hit generate. That way you can see what it did and you can go back to where it was if you want to go back. As long as you're at the same seed, you'll be able to track down where you last uh, generated at. Now look at this. This is starting to get well defined, folks. So now we got some actual ships, vessels in the space. That looks dope. I'm storing this one. I'm going to add to assets. Because it does look pretty good. The background is corrected. Everything is looking really unique. So let's bring that prompt up a little bit more. Prompt weight to about 25. And we're going to hit generate again. And eventually I'm going to change the arrangement of the words. You want to do that too. Play around with the arrangement of the words. And so now if you notice, we're getting more well-defined on the ships. 
So I'm going to add that to assets because I like the definition of things going on. And this is even more well-defined. A whole lot of stuff is going on here. This is really, really turning into something unique. Live, man. This is live. Crazy. So let's go to 90%. Generate. That's the strength. I wasn't supposed to take the strength. I forgot. I was supposed to take the prompt weight. Because I got like a pattern and technique. I already knew it was going to make something totally different. Because the, the further you go with the strength, it starts to try to iterate something entirely different from the last iteration. So now I lost my whole entire concept that I was working on there. So let me go back to 85% so I can get back what I had. Hit generate. And it's going to jump right back immediately because you already generated it. So since that seed was created, I believe seeds can be created from scratch if they've never been generated. But as soon as you generate it, now it's in that location and it will never change. So that's why you can always get back to it. So seed generation into a pod is no joke because you're the, you could be the first one that created that seed and then someone else can find it. The only way they can find it, they have to have all the same parameters as you that you set for. So just keep that in mind as well uh let's see so doing this live may not be great for folks who don't want other people to access that generation of that seed so i wouldn't recommend for everybody to do all the stuff that they want to really work on in their art forms to be something they provide to the public but um i believe all this ai art in general is set to be in the public domain as soon as you you get it generated so that's another thing so it's up to the content creator and their use of it pretty much so let's go we're going to go up to 30 let's go to the full level of the prompt weight and generate and see what it does should be way more well defined no, it's not way more well-defined. It's actually more artistic to me. And I, I actually like this. So this is something I can use on a graphic, like a graphic tee or something like that. Because of the style, it's really styled and nice details, even though some of it may be a little bit out of whack, a little distorted. The lines are not 100% linear. That is what makes it art. It, you know, it makes it look unique. That's what I think. It doesn't have to be all rigid and so, so straight and so formed up that everything has to be like, like a robotic, a robot or something. That's not real art to me. Art has to have a sense of some sort of a imperfection as well. That's what I believe personally. But who am I? I don't know. I'm just an average everyday, everyday person anyway. So maybe my opinion doesn't matter or don't count. I'm not sure. So let's hit download. And we're going to bring this one in. We're going to call it stars 1C. Because this is definitely something I'm going to use. And other people can use it if they want. It's up to them. But um, you would have to copy every little detail that I did and go onto runway to get it. All right. So I might offer up some of my stuff to the public, just give y'all folks the seed and I'll give you all the levels and scales that I used and you can go for it. So you don't have to try to figure out everything and come up with it yourself. So let's see, 10 astronauts. Let's move this to 10 astronauts in the sky because we don't need to reproduce the stars in the sky when we already got it. And what I mean by that Let's go here because we don't need this. We're going to go back out and we're going to go to our assets. And as you see, we have the stars in the sky multiple times. We don't need it. It's already there. And it's here. It's here. It's here. It's in multiple iterations that I already stored. So that's why that's why runway is just I'm telling you, it's the next level in AI art. That's what I believe. And nobody can tell me otherwise because all the other tools are not user-friendly like this. This is the most user-friendly AI art tool, period.
period. And it's a AI, AI video editor as well, which makes it even more mind blowing. All right. So enough about uh, enough about the powers and the uh, uh, the immense potential of what runway really has. Um, let's jump in on the 10 astronauts in the sky. Oh, not sky. Uh, let's just put 10 astronauts. because We don't need the sky. We up in space. So <laughs> let's hit generate and see what it does with the same exact every little detail set up. So what I, I might do is take this graphic and then use 10 astronauts. So let me just copy this and then run with a duplication. Leave this open. Jump in this one. Throw it in and then duplicate the settings. Everything I have to duplicate. So let's go in concept art. I didn't even change the other levels of detail which is medium, mood, I didn't even go into all of that. We're gonna take the prompt weight to 30. We're gonna jump in and grab this seed. So you can't grab the seed unless you activate the use fix seed. So you have to hit the, the tick mark. So uh, hold on one second. I think I copied a seed somewhere. So no, I didn't, I, I got rid of that. Sorry about that. So let's go back. I got rid of one of my seeds by mistake. I'm not stressing it. So use fix seed and now we can, oops, sorry. We can go in, paste it. And then the strength, what was the strength? 85, yeah, the strength is 85. Um, These bars, you can move these, which are arrow key on your keyboard. So keep in mind, if you can't fine tune to the exact percentage or the exact, exact prompt weight, you depress your left click mouse button and you just move the arrow keys on your keyboard and it allows you to get exactly to that specific level and scale of what you wanted to adjust it to. So that's that. And now we can generate. I believe everything is identical. Yep. Everything's identical. We're going to hit generate now for image to image. And let's see if it throws up some astronauts in there. That'd be dope. Well, it did, but they look kind of goofy. <laughs> it threw up two astronauts. That's funny. All right. So that didn't necessarily work the way I wanted it, but that's okay. You know, cause I'm on an extreme level right here. So let's drop this down Hit generate again. We drop in the, the prompt weight and let's see what the kind of graphic we get now. If we don't get something unique, we can play around with the other elements that we have. This looks unique. I don't know what's going on here, but what kind of spaceship is this? And what's going on up here? What is this? This looks like some sort of clouds or something. There's no clouds in, in, in the sky. I mean, in, uh, not the sky in, uh, in space. There's no clouds in space. What's going on? All right. So we're going to hit uh, add to assets. And now what we're going to do is open up this fixed seed thing. Because the fact that it's locked into that fixed seed, we don't really need a fixed seed because it, we started out from scratch. So let's go back to 30. Just take off the fixed seed and generate and see what it does there. We don't want to be locked into that initial seed because that wasn't the seed to, to begin with. Now look at what it did. Now see, this is this is what I wanted people to bear witness to. This is untouchably amazing. Untouchably amazing what it just did. By me just taking off the fixed seed, the prompt weight all the way to the extreme, the strength to 85, it's at the the very very highest level scale close to the most highest scale that it, it possibly can go go to to make a definition of a graphic now check this out these are astronaut suits as you can tell got the american flag there 
very high detailed everything is detailed amazing look at the background remember those colors that i had when i was on ms paint even those colors the pinkish and the other color is in there and some of the darker colors is in there and all those colors fused into here to make this graphic everything was used that my friends is no joke what it's done is no joke for me to go from where i started with to get this off of one single generation no freaking joke we're gonna go to add to, to assets so don't limit yourself don't just get to this tool and say oh i can't get nothing no it's because you probably haven't experimented with it enough to find out that there's more than meets the eye there's more to it it's going to levels that are beyond and is doing things that you didn't think were possible that's that's what this tool can do so once you start to understand the underlining things that govern how ai art tools work in general the backbone of it what is doing digitally what is doing computational wise you'll start to go even further if you can pour that together and, and mend that and mush it and mash it together with your art skills that you have if you have any art skills or any other skills of digital graphical graphical uh, analysis or graphics uh maybe you're into graphic arts maybe you're i don't know what skills you have but whatever skills you have on the table bring all your interpersonal skills your social skills bring everything to the table and start working into analyzing and breaking down what this tool can do because now once you take that into effect your brain will start to summon much more strategy and technique to come up with very unique designs and that's what that's what i'm doing right now i mean i've been going so hard so freaking hard y'all y'all folks have no idea you know like my wife been complaining 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 because i'm spending too much time doing this but there's no such thing as too much time when you're alive like we don't have that much time on the planet you know what i'm saying so eventually we're going to all expire we have a very short term expiration date or born on date they also call that in science born on date so or shelf life humans have a very short shelf life maybe about 50 to 100 years some people don't even make it past the umbilical cord you know what i mean so whatever the case is you want to go as hard as you can to come up with something that you could say that you helped to bring into the world as a co-creator right so there you go i helped bring this into the world because it wasn't here before i helped to generate it to get it to prompt all this stuff it just wasn't here there are graphics that look like this but no one created this one i guarantee you so the ai art tool done it but it needed my help to guide it there see what i'm saying so it takes it takes a lot it, de it definitely takes a lot to understand what you're doing in general but for this whole specific category uh, and genre of AI art, you just got to go a little bit deeper, and dig deeper. That's what I, I recommend. So that before you jump into it and before you assume what's going on, at least you know ahead of time, you know, things, you have foresight. So let's add this to assets before we have a cataclysmic crash or anything of whatever kind of sorts sometimes i'll be feeling like yo my computer must have been hacked in the past or something because every time i get to a really good generation or a new creation something goes wrong maybe because i'm going too hard as well that's possible so look at that this is the full image we got the foot we got the feet we got every little thing we got the fingers five fingers this one looks like it had five fingers and it's turning. The hand is turning. You can't see the back of it. This one has five fingers. This one has five fingers. That is crazy because AI art in general doesn't really come up with everything. You don't get all the, the fingers and appendages sometimes. You don't get the, the well-defined def, well feet and legs. You don't get really nice face. And I like that if you look at this, you can see planets in their freaking graphic in their in their helmet like like they're facing planets and this one's facing stars 
And this one looks like it's facing the moon or a moon. Like, yo, this is crazy. Y'all folks witnessed that live. That was that was nuts that it, it generated this. I didn't even think it was going to do that. I never generated anything this high quality like that off of runway. So this is the first, a first live. And hopefully you're watching. If you're not, it is what it is. <laughs> Some people are not going to even make it all the way to towards the tail end of this video. It's just not part of their interest. So they'll never know what, what lies within, you know, just like a book. Like some, so many people don't know how to read or write. Because they chose not to, they opted out of learning. You know what I mean? So the whole learning process is no joke. It's no joke. Learning is powerful, ultra powerful for a human being in general. And other than that, um, I don't really have much else to say about that. All right, here we go. We got a bunch of iterations. Looks like I stored it twice, but hey i should store it like a thousand times because it is it's just that good in my eyes all right so now that i know it can generate this what else can it generate it can go even further obviously so we just typed in 10 astronauts folks and we only we only got three but three beats none <laughs> or maybe just one by himself so what else do we want to do so the idea of playing with the settings as you folks see what it it was able to change and create something totally entirely unique man these settings are no joke too so now we can use fix seed and lock into this so once you want to lock into something that's when you use the fix seed so from that now we can play around and adjust and tweak and do other things cuz maybe i want to i want to try to create something more unique than this but I don't think I'm gonna, I'm gonna get anything else beyond this right now. I just don't think so. But hey, your mind is a limitation as well. Now, another thing I wanted you to know: while you're on the fixed seed, if you want, you can just go up one in seed or down in seed and see what it does as well. So we're gonna hit generate right now. We want up one in seed, so it's like six sixty at the back. It was at six fifty nine. In the back so i want to get back to it i have to go to 659. uh-oh here we go i want one seed up and look how many astronauts we got one two three four five six and part of another one seven and this one looks like this looks like a flying saucer or something kind of weird i don't know and this looks like a planet or some other foreign object up in space a ufo unidentified flying object and then i don't know what this is it looks like an egg it, it could be a planet it could be i have no idea but this is interesting in itself we got another american flag there we got another flag there they all look pretty dope not that bad in terms of the art so I'm going to save this one. Pretty cool. Now, if you click generate again, it's going to pop right back in the same exact one. So let me bring it back down to 59 just to show you if I generate. Now we're back to this one. See that? Pretty dope. So now we're going to drop down to 58. Go the other direction. See what it does. So you have so much room. For you to go all the way down in number of seeds down to one, that's going to take a very long time. It might take your whole lifetime to generate every single seed. And this is, what is it? Uh, 532 million. We're at 532 million, 636,658 seed. So if you wanted to type one, we can type one in there. Actually, let me get, hold on one second. I messed up a little bit. We're gonna get back to the original seed and copy it before we leave it. Hold on, that's not the original seed. Cause the original seed is the best, I think. 
so far. But this doesn't look bad as well. One, two, three, four, five, and then part of a six astronauts just standing up there. And we still got the colors, but look what happened. The background has changed, folks. How is that possible? We got shadows. They standing with shadows. They freaking have shadows. Their legs look real. This all looks somewhat realistic. How is that even possible? Yo, you got to check out Runway. I'm telling you, folks, this is why I'm recommending it. Because it is doing stuff that I can't do on Stable Diffusion. And I can't do on Mid Journey. I just haven't been able to do it. I keep, I kept trying, and it, no matter what seed level or what scale of everything I've adjusted, I keep getting seven fingers, six fingers, four fingers, no fingers, uh, legs missing, all kinds of crazy stuff. But this is powerful. It's just impressive. And I believe Runway is using Stable Diffusion to some degree as well. Now, I, I think I was wrong on one of my live streams by stating that it uses stable diffusion i think runway is built into stable diffusion when it comes to definitely runway uh created a, a stable diffusion version of 1.5 something to that effect i'm not a, a guru at this stuff not even by far but i'm exploring and i'm learning let's put it like that when it comes to ai stuff and ai art so i don't know everything about it I don't know how to put it on my computer because I don't have an NVIDIA graphics card. I actually have an AMD graphics card. I have a Ryzen 9. So if you don't have a NVIDIA graphics card, you kind of shit out of luck when it comes to being able to have it on your PC to have stable diffusion and a whole bunch of other AI art tools that you probably can put on your computer. So the graphics card is important because you have to have CUDA. And if your CUDA, if CUDA isn't workable then you have to use the google collab and that's what i was doing for a while so here goes the google collab page i would use the google collab page and this is not easy to utilize not by far there's tons of stuff on the screen and you have to know where to go and what to click and what to do at what point and how much time you have to wait you're gonna have to sit there and wait for it to do this and do this so many different things going on this one is like motion diffusion where you can get like a 3D character avatar to actually apply motion and all kinds of different things. So I'm experimenting with all that kind of AI stuff as well. All kinds of things like video upscaling. This is video 2X. I haven't even created videos on it. But besides my experimenting, this stuff of creating the graphic arts, I'm telling you, man, this is just light years beyond what we we've been able to do in the past i've never been able to create this much content that fast most of this stuff i started about a day ago and i got this many iterations even though runway is a one single iteration at a time i still got so many i've been doing it for hours and hours and hours i just keep going hours and hours and hours and hours and hours 12 hours past i'm still doing it you know stuff like that because if you go in that hard, eventually you're going to start getting things that are just mind blowing the images and you can use it. This is the, the thing. You can use it for something. You can use it for maybe you want to make T-shirts. So here goes my T-shirt or shorts. This is a uh, what is it? Teespring, also known as spring.com. And you can create content off of it. You can bring your content on it, I should say, and then create apparel and come up with graphic. These are my first iterations using Stable Diffusion. The graphic doesn't look that great, but it's okay. I mean, I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. I got some really fun collages, things like that. I'm offering this content as well on my YouTube channel. So you can tie it to your YouTube channel. That's the thing that's even more powerful. I'm gonna create a series to show folks how to create the graphics using the graphic editor on spring on teespring so i'm gonna show you i created this today with the with the birds that i showed y'all folks so if i can iterate stuff that quick and come up with actual concepts that are real like in the real world they're drawn on actual art forms and wearable content wearable stuff like 
shirts, uh, jackets, pants, whatever, anything. I can come up with my own brand, man, and that that's that's no joke. That is not something to to um to laugh about. This that's some serious stuff because that can can generate income. You can earn something from it. And that's why I'm going so hard because why not? Why not become my own boss where I I say and dictate what's going to happen to me next? Like if I want to go to another country next week, guess what? It's up to me. It's my directive. You know, I give my directive. I, if I have to stay at home for two weeks, it's my directive. Even though I'm actually my own boss right now, <laughs> but I'm my own boss on a different level. I'm not really making that kind of money to really dictate and say, oh, I'm going to go somewhere next week, like super far. It's just not going to happen. It might take me maybe six months to build up the money and store it and save it. You know what I'm saying? So if my artistic direction goes so far and I actually craft an actual brand out of everything that I know how to do, because not everybody can create unique pandas like this, right? Where they're sitting on trees with a text prompt. You can't get exactly this. It's just not going to work. You have to know what you're doing, obviously. So if I can go with my creative design and come up with some very unique stuff and keep it consistent and keep going and keep going and keep going, I can become like Walt Disney. You know what I'm saying? Because I have these AI art generators as my artists helping me behind the screen. They're they're my they're they're my pencil pushers and they're my my um direct directors. I can turn them into directors of my art direction. You know what I'm saying? And I can have them do whatever I want them to do. And that that that's the future. That's what I'm telling y'all folks. I believe that a hundred percent because of what it's doing now. It's like the only thing that's, that's stopping us is a paywall sometimes because some of these tools may not allow you to use it unless you pay. But I love that Runway has done what they've done. They, they went the direction of Unreal Engine. So let's go up and look up Unreal Engine real quick. And this is not advertisement for them. But I've used them and they've went very, very far. Now look at look at what what comes out of Unreal Engine. Just look at the graphics. Just this in, in, in general. This looks real, by the way. That's what I believe. It looks somewhat real. Unreal. But it looks real. So Unreal Engine just took it to another level. What they did is they offered up a platform for free. Free versus paid. So when you jump into freemium and you have this freemium model where tons of stuff is offered to content creators, people who have the potential to create stuff. Now they have access, fluid access, daily access. They can just go in and they can come up with stuff that is something that you couldn't imagine they can come up with because they have the time to do it because it's free. Once it's something that's charging you all the time, charging you all the time, your creativity is somewhat limited because you might lose your budget for whatever reason because cat catastrophes happen in the world. All kinds of mayhem and all kinds of disruption happens in the world. So you can be thrown off. Your computer might just melt down or whatever. I don't know. Go through all kinds of different things. So whatever your tools are, they're not going to be 100% solid all the time. You know what I mean? So whatever you're going through in your daily process, you might not have the money to pay for the tool right away. But Unreal made everything free. And then up to a certain point. So once you get to a certain point and you start scaling out, now you can choose to pay because you have enough earnings. You earned enough and you you did enough of your own work to really go up to the next level. I, rec I highly recommend for folks to tune into this tool because you can use Runway and Unreal Engine in conjunction and marry them together because Runway is going to help you to craft your videos, right? So you take whatever learning skills that you develop from Unreal Engine, you build it up, build it up, build it up, build it up. It might take you five, ten years. I don't know how long it's going to take you to get really good at it. But once you get super good at it, 
everything like i said mostly everything on unreal is free now see it says create without limits with unreal engine you can bring amazing real-time experiences to life using the world's most advanced most hold on keyword most advanced real-time 3d creation tool and i guarantee you i don't see anything out there that could that could beat them right now from what they can do and they're offering it for free so a lot of other tools they can come up with high higher quality graphics yes but they charge in so much money so they limit people and and you can't go that far with your creativity with that you know what i'm saying especially if you're on a low budget especially if you're poor if you come from a poor family and that's generally the most creative people are the people that are the poorest because they have more to prove they have more that they have to do in order to get up the success ladder so they generally have the most creativity half of the time but they're limited you know what i mean so it's it's not fair that they have to go through all of that just to come up with something it might take them 20 30 years to come up with their first super unique film or whatever it, it, it takes you know what i'm saying but some of them never really get discovered they get counted out and that's what that's why i'm here i'm here to count them in to add to those who don't have you know what i'm saying to add my time and my input and my investment of my knowledge and whatever i find out there i want to add to people i'm not taking away i'm not subtracting from anyone i'm not dividing and conquering i don't have a competition my only competition is me you understand and that's what i know i know as a human being a lot of illusion exists and a lot of fakery and bs and mumbo jumbo that people tend to push on each other because they have fear so when you're when you're locked down and strapped to your chair digitally like you're in the matrix and you got these goggles on and all this and you have all this fear bubbled up you're going to be very frustrated and very drowned out like you don't have a voice but in actuality if you realize that all of that stuff is an illusion and you have control of your creativity you can blast all that stuff out of your way using your creative outlet using your voice using your your ability to generate on your own you can do it from scratch like a pencil or a pen and uh and with paint and then you can move on to other platforms so that's what we're doing as content creators we're moving from platform to platform and we're extending our voice we're taking our minds and going to next dimensions and open up opening up other planes of existence like like um the rapper jay-z said other plane planes of existence are opening in his uh, quadruple on tantra whatever they said i heard that on on uh some uh <laughs> some news station you know so this is the reality man we dealing with this kind of stuff so if you realize that while you're creating you're going to have a, a much greater fire your inferno is building and you you really are fueled to come up with something that's very unique you're not gonna you know let, like allow anything to stop you you know what i'm saying nothing can stop us nothing can stop us now you know what i mean think about that we got all of these free tools so what's stopping you just go out there and create and that's what i recommend so i just wanted to jump into that that tangent and express it because we're on the subject of ai art we're dealing with the universe now trying to create universal themes and all kinds of stuff with this let me just go and jump real quick with the dog because i want to end this live stream so let me go with the dog background we started with the doggy background we're going to end with him so i'm not going to delete anything because all this stuff is useful i'm telling you this is just mind-blowing stuff so let's get to the doggy. Let's go back back in time. And we're not going to worry about his 3D graphic. We're going to just input him in. So we're going to go from um we already did the text to 3D texture, then we got the base off of MS Paint. So we're going to go to image to image. We're going to upload him. And did I bring him in? No, I didn't. So I made an error, I think. So actually, I did need him. All right, we'll use this one. 
we're not worried about this one. So we're going to go down and type in cute doggy. See if we can get him back. Because in the process of trying to create the other graphic, I forgot to store him. So we'll just generate. Start over from scratch. This time we're going to fly. Because I'm not going to explain too much. I'm just going to jump in. All right, we got a different dog. It's fine. So keep in mind the stuff that I was talking about in terms of positioning on the screen. Another thing you could do, let's, oh, I was telling you I was going to show you the sphere. So there goes the sphere. You can use the sphere as a texture. And you can iterate off of that as well. This is how I did the other iteration. So maybe I might use this spiral thing and play with that. That's kind of hurts the eyes a little bit. And you can go to image. So you can just use the regular image. So maybe I'll just use the image, go to save as after I right click it and call it doggy. Now I'm going to go back to let's hit the back arrow. I'm going to go back to image to image and then upload and find a doggy's head, throw him in there. And we'll call it cute doggy just to start out with. So I might have to tile them if I want to get multiple doggies in the screen. I don't know. But let's see what it does. We just want to see what iterates on the screen. And there we go. See, so now it uses that doggy's face to create a dog. See? So that's just an easy way to create graphics right there. Very simple. You type in on the 3D, the 3D, uh, the text to 3D thing, a simple prompt, general, something general. Nobody can complain about it obviously and we got a real looking dog here so doggy strolling on the street no oh, in the park in a park let's do that cute doggy strolling strolling in a park Might not do anything, but look at that. It did something. That is is very potent. This looks real. It definitely looks real. So I'm telling you, this is crazy. We're going to go to advanced. And we didn't even mess around and go too far. So let's bring up the prompt weight a little bit. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to get a more well-defined image. But even with the prompt weight down very low, would it set a default? It already iterated something pretty profound. So what we're going to do before we do that, we're going to open up a new tab. We're going to scale up that dog first. Remember I told you all about the scaling. So we're going to go to our favorite scaler tool. Actually, I should have went to the backgrounds first. Sorry about that. Oh, it worked. All right. So we're going to take the doggy's face or doggy head graphic and throw it in there. And this time we're going to do the same exact thing, but scaled up with the scaler though. It seems like it took the graphic and turned it more into an art form art look. So maybe it might create an art artsy looking type of thing when we bring it over to image to image. So let's see, uh, let's go down. <clears throat> bring them in and we're going to go to the doggy underscore four times that's a scaled one open and keep in mind it's going to be a random generation because or unless we use this fixed seed we can try to take that fixed seed go in there go to advanced and use seed Use fixed seed and see if we can generate what we got over here. 
So we'll go cute doggy strolling in park. Paste. Oh, what happened? Yo, how did that happen? It said cute doggy strolling in park. All right, we'll copy that. Jump back in, paste, and hit generate. And it should be the same graphic. I'm not sure. Did I have anything else set up in there? Nothing else. Oh, I have the prompt weight at 10.1. Okay. Let's move the prompt weight to 10.1. My bad. Generate. Now, it's not going to actually come up with the same graphic. You want to know why? The pixels are now scaled up. So all the pixels are different. So there's no way. The only way it will come up with the same graphic is if we use the same init image, which is the original one. So hold on. Which was this one. Why does it look like that? I don't know what happened with this one. That looks weird. It says something went wrong. Let's try again. So now it's starting to come up with errors. Well, something happened with this graphic. I don't know why it looks like that. Okay, so it's coming up with this. Let's uh reload the page. And select this graphic. So for some reason, it doesn't look good here. It's just weird. Okay, whatever. And this one definitely looks better. So let's go back to this one and try it one more time. So we're going to go up to 10.1. And using the fixed seed, paste that in there. Oh, sorry about that. I forgot to get the, the seed. Copy. Technically, it should come up with that same graphic. And we have to copy this. Generate. It should. Yep. It's identical. You see that? But for some reason, this time it looks a little bit better. Wow. That's interesting. So all it did was it went in and corrected the pixels a little bit more. So this is just an idea, folks, for y'all folks. You can do this kind of stuff. You can play around. If you want to get some unique graphics, this is the one of the best ways to do it is to just work off of the, the text to 3D. You can also use image to text, or sorry, text to image. So let me just show you the text to image method, but that one is gonna be some somewhat random based on the prompt. Just like the, the, the text to 3D. The text to 3D is random, but I think it's much more directed based on how you choose to angle things, how you choose to tile it, how you choose to position it. And it's gonna work out even better to create graphics, stunning looking graphics for backgrounds. That's why I like to use it for background purposes. So let's go, um, hold on, did it disappear? Yeah, so, somehow it went away. I don't know how that, that happened. So let's go uh, text to image. And we'll put cute doggy. Generate. 
think the only reason why I don't like this is because it has set uh, parameters and on the setting is set up a certain way. But look at that. It came out with a really nice graphic. This looks real. That's dope. So you can use this method or you can use the other method. But with this method, you can't bend the perspective. You can't change the perspective. It's just flat 2D. You know what I'm saying? Unless the graphic comes out where the character looks 3D and it's angled and the background is angled to some sort of degree. You can't really mess around with the other, the text to 3D type of type of thing. So you can't do the text to 3D rotation and moving around the screen. You can't do it, any of that with text to image. So yeah, that's the difference. So other than that, I'm out of here. Joe Love and Peace to all. Mike Pugh signing off. I just wanted y'all folks to see what's possible. I wanted to throw in some positive, uplifting information, knowledge, uh, empowerment, everything I, I can put and fuse into this live stream. So it's not dull and boring. And also, you know, just throw in what what's possible. You know, you can take yourself to any level and degree that you want today. It's all about what's in your mind and how you choose to take your, your mindset to different levels and scales because it's unlimited, the potential. Look at this guy. He looks like he's actually strolling in the park, and it's a zoomed-up close-up. I'm telling you, this is just sensational. So I can take this graphic, let's go in, and try to upscale it. But this time, I'm not going to use the same upscaler. I'm going to probably try to use one online just to see what that one does. Um, I'll call it doggy one before I end the, the live stream and let's go to, uh, let's open up a new page, go to upscaler that I have, see if GFP PGAN works. I don't think it's working. Nope. GFP GAN has been off the runtime error. has been showing up for me. I don't know if it happens for you, but this is another upscaler. This is one of the first ones that I use that's really powerful. Uh, let's go and try Real S, S Grand by Hugging Face. So this is the Real S Grand by Hugging, Hugging Face, which pretty much does the same thing as the one I got on my computer. So we're going to go in, go to Pictures and my folder for Runway. And do I have it in Animals? No, I don't. Hold on, backgrounds. Nope, not in this backgrounds. I have it on the main folder as backgrounds. There we go. And here goes the doggy. And we're going to submit. And hopefully the pixels will look better. But sometimes when you upscale with some of these upscalers, it blurs a lot of the pixels. So it's really good for like art, artsy stuff, not really for photography. But... Wow. It took it up and it looks really good. I'm telling you folks, this is sensational, sensational stuff. So I could I couldn't tell that this wasn't a photo of an actual dog cuz it's not a photo of a dog, but it looks like a real dog. Wow. And on that note, I'm going to end this session. Joe Love and Peace to all. Mike Pew signing off. I'll see y'all folks in the next live streams, the next videos on um, whatever I come up with. Um, be on the lookout for most definitely what I was talking about and mentioned it earlier, which is the background series. I'm going to try to break down how to create unique backgrounds. Uh, I've really have a lot of experience dealing with the background type of stuff because I was trying to create background virtual sets for um, 3D, 3D graphics. So that's where I got some of that experience from. So it's pouring in into the AI art field so to speak. So um, we'll do that. And I'll see y'all folks next time. Feel free to hit the thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe and feel free to share my videos socially if you feel it's going to impact people in a positive way. And I am out. Peace.